Hallelujah. I pray that y'all bless today, brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day to get right with Jesus. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Don't wait until tomorrow. You don't know what can happen tomorrow. There's a lot of things that can happen between now and and tomorrow. So if you watching this video and you don't know the Lord and you're not right with God in your heart, give your life to Jesus. Repent from sin. Confess your faults to the Lord. Choose to live a life of obedience to Christ. And the Bible says that God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God is amazing. He is strong in compassion and he delights in mercy over judgment. It doesn't matter what you've done, how dark your sins are. God is saying, come to him. Come to him. He wants you to be his son. He wants you to be his daughter. Let go of the world. Let go of your own life and give your life to Jesus. And you will have eternity with God forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is precious. And He is very kind. He's a good God. Hallelujah. We just need to thank the Lord that He's a good God. Hallelujah. So, praise God. I'm over here. And I'm still in Arkansas. And I'm going back to Louisiana tomorrow because I'm getting hit with some excruciating tooth pain and um when they pulled my tooth the other day guess what they left a root in the place where they pulled the tooth hallelujah that rhymed <laughs> they left the root in the place where they pulled the tooth hallelujah but they left a piece of the root there and oh it hurts <laughs> Oh, it's torturous. It's torturous. It hurts. So I never got to do no preaching while I've been out here because of this. And um, I'm going to go back to Louisiana and get this dealt with because it's a big old hindrance. So I just got to roll up my sleeves and just roll with the punches and, and keep on pressing. We have issues in life. We have problems in life that will begin uh, to develop, that may hinder us. So, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We just got to press through it and, and uh, deal with those issues in Jesus' mighty name. So, today I want to talk a little bit about unforgiveness and bitterness and holding grudges. Um, because I believe that this is one of the main weapons of destruction that the devil is using against the body of Christ to bring many Christians into sickness, disease, and also to hell. And I don't want nobody to go to hell because I'm not talking about unforgiveness because this is an issue that is plaguing the body of Christ. They are allowing people to hurt them. They are allowing people to wound them in their hearts and they are holding grudges. And because of that, if they don't deal with it, they're going to go to hell. And if we can't forgive our brothers and sisters or people that we see each and every day that do things to us, how can we expect to receive God's forgiveness? You see, God forgave us, so his requirement now is that we forgive others. We owe nobody but love now, and love is forgiveness. Love overlooks an offense. Love overlooks a transgression. And we need to be in a place where we are living a life of forgiveness. And I don't want people to be in a rut. I don't want people to be defeated because of unforgiveness. And the only way to deal with this problem is we have to talk about it. The Bible says you shall know the truth and 
the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we just thank the Lord Jesus for the truth that he brought to us so that we can be liberated and walk in a life of freedom. Hallelujah. Jesus purchased freedom for us, but there is a requirement to walking in this freedom that he has purchased through his sacrifice when he laid down his life for us. And the requirement is that we must live a life of forgiveness. We can't hold grudges. And um, when you hold grudges and you hold bitterness inside of your heart towards people, what it does is it poisons you and it gives demons legal rights to come into your life and begin to torment you. The Bible is perfectly clear that when you choose to hold on to unforgiveness, the principle in Scripture is that God hands you over to the torturers. They're the tormentors. He hands you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh until you are willing to forgive. And see, a lot of us don't realize that and we in a place of blindness and we wonder why we in this rut. We just can't find ourselves to we just can't find that place of, of freedom that we longing to step into and we hindered on the inside. It doesn't matter how much we may be in the word of God or praying. We may be even seeking prayer from somebody listening to YouTube video after YouTube video, but we just can't seem to get out of that rut, that place on the inside. And we're not realizing that we're in that rut because we're holding on to unforgiveness. And see, when a person's holding on to unforgiveness, it doesn't matter how many prophets pray on that person. It doesn't matter how many apostles pray on that person. It's not going to help that person because that person has a spiritual blockage from them receiving restoration, from them receiving healing to be restored where they need to be. And it's not until they come to this place were they willing to let go of that unforgiveness is when they receive restoration. Now, watch. We look at Matthew chapter 18, and I'm not going to preach. I just want to talk about this uh, a little bit. And, well, actually, I want to talk about it for a few days. I want to deal with this because I believe this is a liberating teaching uh, I believe this will bring liberty. We have to love. We have to forgive. And um, a lot of people are in ruts because they're not willing to forgive people. And um, they can't get out the rut. And it's because they're not willing to let it go. And it's a spiritual blockage. And it opened up the door for the tormentors to come in. And they are the torturers. Now, Matthew chapter 18 talks about the unforgiving servant. And again, listen, I don't want none of us to be in bondage to this. And I, I don't want anyone to miss heaven because they are holding on to unforgiveness. Because let me say this, once you choose not to forgive somebody, you're going to go through this regression. God allows torturers to come into your life to torment you for the destruction of the flesh until you choose to forgive. And when God allows this to happen, it's not because God's mean or cruel, it's because he's merciful. It's a way of getting you to recognize something ain't right. You see, you can be walking with the Lord and everything is good. You're experiencing the presence of God. I mean, the love of Christ is overflowing in your heart. But then a year down the line, you start losing that fire. You start losing that love. You, you're in this big old rut. You're starting to get oppressed and tormented in your mind. And you're like, what is going on? But you're not recognizing that you had some issues with people. And in having them issues with people, what happened is... 
you decided to retain that hurt and hold a grudge towards what happened with them people. And because you chose that, God allowed these torturers to come into your life in order to get you to recognize something ain't right so that you can search your life and say, what is going on, God? I, I don't have the fire no more. I don't have the love no more. I'm in a rut. It doesn't matter how much I'm reading. It doesn't matter how many YouTube videos I watch, how much prayer I get from people. It's not helping. And God allows it to be like this so that you can recognize and realize that you are holding on to unforgiveness. And no prayer in the world is going to work. No YouTube video in the world is going to work. No, um, no prayer that you pray yourself is going to work unless it's the prayer of asking God for forgiveness and letting go of the grudge. That you're holding towards whoever it is that you're holding the grudge to. And it's only then is when you're going to receive that restoration. The fire is going to come back. Oh, if you got sickness or disease, it's going to begin to go away because you chose to forgive. And see, unforgiveness is the sin that leads to death. Once the torturers come into your life... They bring you into a slow regression of destruction. The Bible says, John 10.10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So when you choose to hold on to unforgiveness, you allow the enemy to come in because it's a, it's a law in Scripture. It's already put down in God's eternal word that if we violate that principle, that is going to open up our life to the tormentors. And the only thing that's going to help us is we have to search our heart and be willing to forgive. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to read this parable. It's the parable of the unforgiving servant. And um, like I said, I believe this is going to be liberating because it's not just about hearing a good sermon. It's not about just getting our ears tickled. We want to be liberated. We want to walk in fire. We want to walk in the love of God. We want to walk in true liberty that God has purchased for us at the cross. And it only comes from walking in a life of forgiveness. Now, starting at verse 21 of chapter 18 of the book of Matthew. Um, open your Bibles and um, go with me. Because this is important. I don't want us to be sick. I don't want us to have diseases that's coming upon our life because we're choosing to hold on to unforgiveness. My friends, we have to be willing to forgive. Now watch what the scripture says. Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 21. Now, bear with me and follow along with me. It says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he begun to settle the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all he had. And that payment be made. The servant therefore fell before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will repay you all. Then the master of that serpent, servant was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. Now, the idea in this parable is that we are the servants that owe a debt to our master. We have sinned against God. And God wants to deal with us, but we say, God, have compassion on me. Forgive me. You see, and the master forgives. 
The master has compassion and says, look, I forgive you for what you've done. Now, verse 28 says, but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarily. I guess that's how you say the word. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him in prison till he should pay the debt. So the servant that received compassion and mercy from his master left after he'd been forgiven, found one of his servants who owed him. And instead of forgiving him, the scripture says he put him in prison until he should pay the, the debt. Now watch what verse 31 says. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? Now watch the next verse. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Now verse 35 says, So my heavenly father also will do to you if each one of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So Jesus gives us this parable. And a parable is an earthly story to reveal a spiritual reality. In other words, what God is showing us is that when we choose to not forgive our brothers and sisters and people that we deal with each and every day, God will hand us to the torturers until from the heart we are willing to forgive. In other words, demons will come into our life to begin to destroy us. It's a slow regression of destruction where we are handed over to Satan until we begin to recognize what we have done and be willing to let go and forgive. And no prayer in the world will help a person that is holding on to unforgiveness. The only thing that will help that person is that person has to be willing to recognize and humble themselves to God, ask God for forgiveness from the heart, be serious about it, and also go to that person that they have negative thoughts and ill will feelings towards and say, look, I am sorry. I have been holding negative thoughts against you. I've been holding a grudge in my own heart and towards you. And I, I want to ask for forgiveness. And see, when you start to do that, God will release you from the tor tormentors. Watch what it says. Verse 34. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So you get handed to the tortures until you pay all that is due. And what's due in the context is forgiveness. You will be handed over to the enemy until you are willing to recognize that you are holding a grudge and, and be willing to let it go and forgive. And see, so many people in the body of Christ have been walking with the Lord they have been experiencing the Holy Ghost, but now they in a rut. Now they losing their fire. Now they're frustrated on the inside. Some are getting sick. Some are even getting cancer and they can't get rid of it. And they don't even understand why. And the root problem is unforgiveness. They are holding on, on to unforgiveness and the torturers have been allowed to come into their life to destroy the flesh. Once again, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. 
So when they come into your life because you have violated this principle in Scripture, they are coming to kill, steal, and destroy. And God allows this because of his mercy in hopes that you recognize what you are doing and deal with it so that you are not hell bound to hell. You see, because anyone who dies with unforgiveness in their heart towards people, they are going to go to hell. They're not going to receive eternal life because the requirement for us to receive eternal life is we must be willing to forgive. It's all through scripture. God won't forgive us unless we are willing to forgive. And um, so many people in the body of Christ right now are in this rut. And like I said, no prayer will help a person that is holding on to unforgiveness. If that person is sick because demons have been allowed to come into their life because they are holding on to unforgiveness, it don't matter how mighty that man or woman of God is that prays on that person, it will not bring any deliverance because that person is holding on to unforgiveness and it's a sin that, that leads to death. And the only one that can fix the problem is the one who's dealing with the problem who is holding on to unforgiveness. In other words, it's up to them. They have to be willing to forgive. Now watch this. First John chapter 5. Let's look at verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. Now watch this next part. There is sin leading to death. And I do not say that you should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin and there is sin not leading to death. So one of the sins that lead to death is unforgiveness. It leads to premature death and it leads to hellfire. If the person who's holding on to unforgiveness is not willing to deal with it. And like this scripture says, it says that. And he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that you should pray about that. See, when a person is committing a sin that leads to death, as in unforgiveness, we can't pray for that. I can't pray on a person and that person receives deliverance because they have a spiritual blockage. They have something between them and God that they need to deal with before they receive that restoration that will come. And a lot of times they sick. A lot of times they tormented, oppressed, depressed, and it's because they holding on to unforgiveness. And when these demons come into their life because of this, it I it de it's determined on that type of demon, what he's going to bring against that person's life. Some people, they get sick. Some people, they get cancer. Some people get sick and the doctors don't even know what's going on. They can't find out what is happening with that person because it's a demon bringing this sickness against them because they are holding on to unforgiveness. And if they don't deal with it, they're going to die prematurely. And then they're going to go to hell because they die holding on to unforgiveness. And you can't receive God's forgiveness if you're not willing to forgive. And what unforgiveness is, is it's really hatred. It turns into hatred. And it's, hatred is equivalent to murder in the Bible. And God wants us to love. The Bible says we owe no one nothing but love. God has extended his love towards us and we have to be willing to love people and love overlooks a transgression love doesn't hold any grudges love embraces people and prays for those who hurt them hallelujah and, and this is where we need to be we need to be in a place where we are recognizing i'm dealing with 
people who are not perfect and they're going to sometimes do things to me and I can't let what they do affect me where I hold a grudge against them. And what I do is I poison myself. And that's what it is. It's a way that we think, wow, I'm going to hold a grudge against this person, but not realizing by doing that, I poison myself. And before you know it, when you refuse to let go of what somebody did, you get really uh, sick in your spirit. You get down and out. You get depressed. You lose your fire. Your attitude becomes stinky because you open your life to the torturous. And we have to be willing to forgive. We have to be willing to love. And this is what this message is about. It's about encouraging us right now to search our hearts and see if we are holding any grudges towards anybody. Because if we're holding grudges, my friends, we are going to be in a spiritual rut. And if you're in a spiritual rut, more than likely is because you're holding a grudge against somebody. The other day I went sit with this family. And um, the guy was talking to me about how he's just beat up. He's getting sick and, you know, things are happening in his life. And he's just been being attacked by people in his family. They just they just come in against him, saying negative things against him. And he, he's just angry on the inside and and he's got this rage on the inside. So. I had begun to minister to him about unforgiveness and to talk to him about loving and being willing to let go. And it all led up to a place where he began to repent. He began to cry. He began to really repent before the Lord in front of all of us. And he began to weep, asking God for forgiveness, telling him how he forgives everybody. And he's willing to go to each one and tell them that he's sorry and after that, I asked, can I, can I, can I pray for you? So he, he allowed me to pray for him. And I began to come against the unclean spirits that had entered him because of him holding on to unforgiveness. And uh, I began to come against it in the mighty name of Jesus, commanding the spirits to loose them and to come out. And my friends, there was a, a mighty deliverance. He started coughing up. Things was coming out of him. The unclean spirits was dislodging itself from him. And I was coming against the spirit of rage, anger, and murder. And this is what was controlling his life because he was holding on to unforgiveness. He was an angry person. He couldn't shake it. He didn't want to be like that. He would, he would lash out in rage and he, he didn't want to be like that. And he didn't really understand that he was holding on to unforgiveness. And when he began to repent, it opened up a door where the blockage was removed. And when I began to come against the unclean spirits and commanding them to come out of him in the mighty name of Jesus, they began to pour out of him. And my friends, after that, he was so liberated. He cried and he thanked the Lord. The next day he got in touch with me telling me on how, how good he felt. He was liberated because he was willing to forgive from the heart. Ask God for repentance. And it brought freedom to him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And this is something that is plaguing the body of Christ in these last days. Satan is looking to bring us into a place where we are holding on to grudges so that he can destroy us. The Bible says that because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. That word iniquity deals with offense. And this is what's going on, my friends. So I don't want to continue on this video. It's already 30 minutes. And, um, but I'm going to continue talking on this subject continually because I want us to be liberated. I want us to search our hearts. And if we are holding on to anything, we need to be willing to let it go so that we can find restoration and we can get back in right standards with God.
Because if not, my friends, Satan will begin to destroy you from the inside out and you will die prematurely. Unforgiveness is a sin that leads to death. And we have to be willing to forgive. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I'm going to talk a lot more on this subject. I'm going to, I'm going to um, drill on this subject until it begins to uh, really open up to us and we begin to see this. Jesus said, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. We need to be willing to let go of grudges. We need to be willing to let go of unforgiveness so that we can find freedom. Hallelujah. You're looking for restoration. You're looking for healing. Be willing to forgive. Get back in right standards with God. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I pray that y'all bless today. Let go of the grudges. I'm going to talk some more about this in the days ahead because I want us to really experience deliverance. I want us to really get out of ruts that we in. I don't want none of us to go to hell because we want to hold on to unforgiveness. I don't want none of us to get sick with sicknesses and disease because we holding on to grudges. I want us to be free. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.